Hey, I yeah. Hi! We're forward with you. I don't think there's any other choices you could have picked. There's no one else who you could have seen, you know, that mean a lot to the city of Leeds and to this place and to, to the people who are into the alternative diverse music scene that, 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 that is around. Certainly from, from the Brugnell point of view, it had to be something that, that meant something not only to us but to the people that come here. Me and Nate talk about all sorts of stuff and I knew he was planning something big but I didn't really, I don't think I'd really thought that he'd, he'd ask us to play. And so it was one of those things, but me and Tom went, yeah. I can't remember what gig it was, but both me and Whiskers were there, and he mentioned it to both of us separately on the same night. And I think we both were reacted relatively positively to it. So then he went into furious overdrive trying to get us to get us to do it, basically. It's all Nate's fault if it goes badly. Um. <laughs> I haven't been on stage or in front of an audience for about six years, so I think that's going to be the biggest thing, how, how I react to that. Um, but you can't rehearse that. We never used to practice. It sounds really funny, but because we did so many gigs, we, we didn't have time to practice and we didn't need to practice. The only time we practiced was when we were writing new songs. So it's been different, I think. <laughs> I remember that first weekend I put uh, Spotify on, picked up my bass and I was shocking, like I could barely play bass, uh, let alone forward rush and it took me quite a while, I probably spent about a week um, hammering away, playing everything and I, I expected to be the one to turn up that didn't know anything and it turns out I was one of the ones that knew the most, which I wasn't expecting. I could play most of nine, I could play twelve, there's a couple of other things I could play but there's whole other bits where <laughs> the band are all playing and I'm like, I've got nothing. <laughs> like, Katie and Rob are like pounding away, you know, playing the bass and the drums, Tom singing, and I'm just there holding my guitar going, nope, don't really remember that this bit was in this song. <laughs> I think we're definitely more upset if a if a mistake happens in this gig than we would have done at any previous gig we've done, even like the biggest gigs that we've done. Like um, we were never that precious about things like that. You know, if a mistake happened, we just thought it was funny most of the time. But um, I think this gig, if something really bad went wrong, it, it would be we, it would be difficult. I think we definitely play them slower, which is good because we used to play them way too fast. Like it's it's kind of weird when I look back on old videos. Like I was looking today on a couple of old videos of us playing, and in a lot of ways we're less tight now because we haven't played as much. But in some ways we're actually better because we're we're not rushing everything. I've been to like a few shows where bands have reformed and stuff, and some I've been like amazed by, and some I've been a bit like, Neh. so I I I don't want anyone to go away and be like, Neh. you know, I want them to be like, oh my god, that was amazing. I I want I want everyone to have fun really. Yeah. 
I found it completely by chance off the Facebook group, totally just out of the blue. I had to check it about three or four times to make sure that what I was seeing it's actually was happening. Actually happening. Right. And oh. then I don't think I've ever moved to a phone so fast and dialed a number. I, so I, I was got, like, "Oh, Russia phone!" And I was like, "Yeah, I know, I've just seen it." <laughs> it was, it was pretty good. Yeah. It was quite. I know sort it's the now hundredth the anniversary. Balloon, almost. Yeah. But it was still quite. Yeah, yeah. I, I was really shocked when you told me. We just didn't think there was going to be a gig, and the fact that that this has happened is just way beyond our expectations and we're just so happy that, that we've just got a chance to experience it again. Somebody sent me a link and said, have you seen this? Oh my lord. And uh, so we got tickets within a couple of hours because it, it was just a no-brainer. This is whatever's happening. We, we were away from home today. But I would have given up a Colchester United home match to come here. And I mean, that's all you need to know, really. You win. <laughs> we've lost. So I hope tonight's really good, just to make up for it. in like two or three years' time, what would be your ideal Manchester? <laughs> 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 How did you want world. to you? I'd like to be able to pay my rent and go to Morrison's and buy some food that I'd like to eat. I think we'd like to be as big as we can be while still being forward, Russia. Yeah, because you're not like a mainstream band, which I think is a good thing. I, I always, I'd like to be about 16 stone, preferably. <laughs> I always think that I want to make, I want to know that, 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 that people are going to be interested to buy the next album, and there's a pretty good chance yeah. that people are going to be interested to buy the album after that. I would say that everything pretty much that the band 
set out to do they achieved which is and pretty much on their own terms and uh, that's really inspiring and I think it's probably inspired a lot of bands not just in Leeds but in the UK to, to go and do the same thing. There was a big unity at the time in Leeds and there was something more about like an organic growth of a natural I wouldn't like to say scene but group of of bands and everyone working for the same vision not necessarily profit but it was just something to to spread the word about good music and belief in each other's bands. There were a bunch of bands that were so so close and I mean us and this Ital and I like trains were really close and then to Sunshine Underground you know this Ital were really close to Sunshine Underground as well um, and that you know there's these and then the splinters off and but us three were really close. Just coming out of like the early 2000s, the slides in the mid 2000s, it, yeah, it did explode. And I think all the industry I started looking towards Leeds, and then you get all the other bands sort of picked up in the wave of interest, there. And it and it was a great time. The whole Leeds scene at the time, I think, was probably you know, really good and really stood for something. And um, everything that London wasn't really, well, London was chasing its tail and trying to find something which was hipper than hip. And in the meantime, all this interesting stuff was happening in Leeds, and right at the centre of it for us, obviously, was Forward Russia. So um, it's nice to come back and get my bearings on what pop music is about. ridiculous that Forward Russia had a top 40 single. If that had, had two top 40 singles, like, that wouldn't happen now. That was a point when I think uh, more fans were buying were buying 7 inches. And they were getting Radio 1 plate and they were getting, they built up a real core fan base through relentless gigging for the best part of a year and a half. Um, and it was good. And our next new entry of 36 this week. Oh, yeah! We're all in different parts of our lives now, like Whiskers and Tom have got babies and things, so there's nothing, there's nothing planned, but I sort of say never say never, like I absolutely love practicing and doing this again. I think there is this kind of realisation that, that, that this kind of is it. So
sometimes.